Hi, so my name's Kaya, if you didn't already know, and I run the platform Femme Fatale Girls. <laughs> um, I wanted to sit down and film a video today along with some others with my friends that will be coming over the next few weeks because the magazine is almost finished. Well, it's about finished, but um, you probably won't see it until December or January depending on when we have the launch party but it's basically finished and so I'm really happy I'm pleased and I've learned a lot during this time and I kind of wanted to explain my experience and my process during this time um, and kind of talk about why I made the magazine why I chose the theme and what the power of love and vulnerability means to me Hi. So I don't really know where to start. I'm not very comfortable talking to a camera, but it's so hard to write all of my thoughts in the little comment box or the little description box on Instagram posts. And our website is currently um, under construction. So I'm just gonna record these videos because I can say everything that I need to say. Whew. So, Issue one, for anyone who has followed Femme for a while and has the first scene, was all about empowerment because that's where I was on my journey at the time. Um, I was fresh out of a tough time and I was discharged from my therapy and thrown back into the world and I really wanted to make the most of life and feel empowered as a woman so um, that issue kind of and that time of life like last year that is what we explored in that zine um and it it warms my heart i'm gonna go get it just in case nobody has seen it okay i'm back so for anyone who hasn't seen it this i'll try and put it up to the camera there we go so this little bad boy is issue one. My friend Roshana is on the front, Lego on the back. And I made this scene with my best friend, Alice. And it was such an amazing, empowering time. And we went and did a few zine festivals and all the money that we raised at our launch party at the, and blah, blah. So all of the money that we raised during, um, the launch party and all of the money that we raised during the zine festivals, we went and donated all the money at Christmas, last Christmas, um, to Nottinghamshire Women's Aid and they work with empowering women and children in domestic violence and domestic abuse situations. So, so once we finished issue one, um, I was already thinking about what I wanted to do next and I knew I wanted to do a full size magazine not a little zine because this is like not a lot of pages it's not too long I still love it it's just the cutest thing ever um but it's not that long because it's a zine so you can't really put that many pages in so I knew I wanted to make a full size magazine like a hundred plus pages um and I kind of wanted to pay respect or I kind of wanted to follow on from what I had learned from issue one with empowerment and working with women's aid and going there and visiting and finding out about domestic violence and perpetrators and all of that stuff. I really wanted to put that into a magazine. So I was like, I'm going to do issue two on domestic abuse and domestic violence and those kind of relationships and then I was like Ugh. I don't think it would be um, very appropriate for me and then I kind of realized that I don't think it would be the most appropriate for me to do um, a magazine on that because I haven't experienced it personally and um, I thought it wouldn't be as authentic so then I thought okay well if not domestic violence then relationships because that's more broad you can kind of talk about all aspects of relationships but then because femme is very is more about self-reflection and how we can help ourselves um I wanted it to be more how relationships 
with others and external things kind of influence our relationship with ourself with us with ourself that didn't sound right <laughs> oh dear i hate this filming thing um yeah so i wanted to explore that a bit more so i went and started brainstorming and i thought well I want to know about my relationships with people, relationships that are romantic, relationships with work, relationships with creativity and I wanted to know how all of these things ultimately kind of affect the relationship that we have with ourselves. Um, and I started it in January and now it is November and originally I was quite upset that it had taken me this long to complete the magazine. But honestly, I really believe in divine timing. And when I made the theme for this magazine, we were taking submissions, so I didn't really think that it was about me, but life is funny like that. And I made this inquiry to relationships for the magazine and I had to have, that's kind of been the theme of my year. So, my relationships with my job have been challenged, romantic relationships, um, friends, family, every kind of aspect of my life has had to go under the looking glass. And now I'm kind of out of it and I've learned all of the lessons. I can completely understand why. <clears throat> oh, oh, why? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I can completely understand why it would take I think everything is just right on time, basically. Um, and, oh God, did I learn this year? Um, so I started collecting content from the magazine with my friend Izzy in January, January? Um, and I worked with my friend Kit and took lots of pictures of people, interviewed people, we took submissions, you'll know if you sent in a submission. Um, we did that till about March or April and got so much great content. And then I kind of, sorry, the camera keeps being awfully annoying. Um, yeah, and then throughout the year, I've kind of been on my own journey with jobs, with knowing my place in the world, with my own relationship, with my own friends, with my own everything. Uh, and so, yeah, I had to go through all of these things and kind of, as I said in a previous video, chop away anything that wasn't really serving me and really have a look. And so that's why the magazine has taken so long. And obviously in the middle, I decided I wanted to do femme full time and become self-employed. So I had to put the magazine on the back burner while I tried to earn money. And I started working for Loughborough University doing femme workshops. Um, and then I started trying to do, uh, what was it? Arts Council funding and then crowdfunding and then working with a graphics designer and then I learned InDesign on my own and now I've designed the whole thing and like what? Like there has been a lot of um, behind the scene parts that people don't see. But yeah, it's been a journey and I've loved and hated every second of it. And I'm really excited for everyone to see it because this uh, body of work really has my whole heart <clears throat> oh I'm so ridiculous um yeah this magazine really has my full heart and I've put literally everything into it um so I hope you like it I'm really excited for everyone to see it and yeah so now I wanted to kind of talk about why the power of love and vulnerability because it started off as issue two relationships and now it's issue two relationships the power of love and vulnerability it's hard to explain so as i've been going on this introspective kind of self-reflection healing journey whatever you want to call it you can't change without on the inside you can't change on the inside without your outer world also changing, without your relationships changing. So as I've been changing this year, I've been growing, I've been noticing habits and things that I wanted to change within myself. Um, everything has been put under the microscope. My jobs, um, 
the places that I go to, the things that I wear, the, the, the hobbies that I do, the people I spend time with, um, the kind of relationships, romantic relationships that I get into, everything has been put under the microscope. Um, and during this year, I'm sure for a lot of people it's the same thing, but a lot of issues from the past have come up. Um, as I've tried to move, I think sometimes you have to heal the past. You don't think there are any issues in the past, but sometimes you have to make peace with the past, with who you are, um, things that have happened so that you can move forward and become someone new. Um, so I really have had to reflect on my life, my whole life, my inner child, um, in order to grow. And so that's made lots of my relationships different. Um, I was in a relationship and that's kind of when I decided I wanted to change the magazine to the title of The Power of Love and Vulnerability because romance always gets you introspective about being vulnerable. Um, so I was reflecting a lot about um, past relationships and how sometimes if your heart is bruised you can feel blocked towards the present um, and friendships and art. And so for me the outlook that I always have is that every single person in your life is your teacher and that's been great because it's allowed me to forgive everybody, it's allowed me to forgive myself and to move forward without any bitterness in my heart because People hate forgiveness because they think that it means that the person who did wrong or whatever or or even if it is in terms of yourself, like it means that you're um, kind of like getting away with what you've done. But personally, I think forgiveness is really freeing. Um, I think when you forgive people, forgiveness is not for other people, it's for you. It's it's for you to heal, it's for you to move forward. If you don't forgive people, you hold anger, resentment and bitterness in your heart space and then it's really difficult. You just block yourself mentally and um, energetically from allowing good to come in because you're operating out of fear of the same thing repeating again. So forgiveness for me has just been so freeing and for me it's the most vulnerable thing because it's allowed, it means that you're making peace with the past and you're not holding on to it um, and you're not holding any grudges and you're okay with the things that have been and you allow, you forgive yourself for the mistakes that you've made, you forgive others and you understand that we are all human and we're all on our own separate journeys and we all make mistakes some are bad some are really bad some are not that bad um, and people make mistakes and you don't need to have them in your life you don't need to have those people in your life but you can forgive them and you don't have to tell anyone that you forgive them <laughs> they don't need to know that do you? or they or you can but the important thing is that you do forgive because that's how you move forward and become free and then you're not holding any, you're not harboring any hate or resentment and you're at peace. Like I trust that I'm on the right path. I trust that everything that has happened in my life up until this point today has happened in the exact perfect way that it was supposed to happen because I believe that I'm on, this is my unique journey and I, I believe that I'm like divinely guided and that everything is working out for me. So that's just a positive perspective and it's my opinion and you don't have to share the same opinion. But for me, that's the most healing perspective that I've ever had because I'm not harboring any hate or guilt or, yeah. And when you forgive and make peace with the past, you can be open to love again. You can be open to vulnerability. And I don't just mean love in a romantic way. I mean open to putting yourself out there again. Say if you went for a, a job that you wanted and you didn't get it, you might feel like, oh no, like I never get jobs, blah, blah, blah. But if you make peace with that past and you next time you go for it, or if you tell someone you like them and they don't respond 
in that way. You should never regret anything. You should continue to tell people how you feel. You should con continue to be open. You should continue to wear your heart on your sleeve and be, be discerning and be um, smart and wise. Don't just run into the arms of terrible people. <laughs> yeah, don't just don't just run into the arms of bad people, but don't let the past experiences make you bitter. I mean, there's so much that I've learned from it this year and on my personal journey, and I thought I'd sit down today and be able to express it eloquently, but it just doesn't want to come out. But I think we should forgive others and we should forgive often and we should forgive ourselves and just tr know that everything I think life is just beginnings and endings basically like every beginning is an ending <clears throat> every beginning is an ending and so it's really important for me and I hope this comes across in the magazine is that you will have heartbreak you will fall out with people you will have knockbacks you will have setbacks you will face disappointment and you will have love you will have laughter you will have friendships you will have great times it's a balance um, and there's beauty in that. We don't have to fear the negative side all the time. I think that is kind of what I've learned from this, the power of love and relationships experience is kind of the duality between the two and understanding that you need the two, you need the light and the dark, um, but you don't want to let either one, well, I mean, you don't want to let fear, you can let love overpower, um, but you don't want to let that, that fear-based energy rule your life. And I think when we experience these knockbacks, which are kind of like the endings, there's always a chance for, I mean, rebirth, new jobs, new people, new friends, new, re new relationships. But what happens is we tend to get fearful that we're gonna be knocked again, that we're gonna be hurt again. And so we become harsh, we close off, um, we don't put ourselves out there, we get fearful and afraid um, and I just, I think my biggest thing with vulnerability is you have to allow yourself to be vulnerable enough to face that, to accept that you might fall again, you might be hurt again, it might be really painful, things might not work out again, but you should be vulnerable anyway because life is to be lived all feelings are to be felt and we can't just keep living through the lens of the past. We can't just keep living through fear. We have to kind of live again, love again, be vulnerable again and again and again. Like you might go, oh my God, I like tell this person that I really love them, but they rejected me. I'm never, ever, ever doing that again. Like, no, do it again, <laughs> do it again. And be vulnerable because I don't think we should live closed off. I think we should, it's kind of like the post that I wrote last night, we should be the most full, the fullest, brightest expressions of ourselves because otherwise it's kind of a waste of a life. You can't just live in fear and misery and let the world and life and experiences pass you by. You need to put your foot forward. Like... If I've fallen out with someone, I want to forgive them because I don't want to be, <clears throat> I don't want to, or forgive myself, like, I, or say sorry, like, vice versa, because um, I don't want to die with hate in my heart over an argument that you won't even be able to remember. Like, not you're not meant to walk with everyone in life forever. Some people are there for a term, some people are there for life, some people are there for this long, some people are there for like a split second, but everyone is your teacher and um, whether that experience be good or bad, whether that experience be scarring and really painful for you, you've learned something from it. And I wanna be brave enough and vulnerable enough to not let those experiences scar me from making more. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've taken out of this year is kind of like whatever happens, shit happens, life goes on and on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> like 
it never stops and we it's up to us how we go forward and how we let the past affect our future and I just want to forgive everyone and for me that's really vulnerable I want to have love in my heart I want to be able to look at the past with understanding um and yeah you might be annoyed about certain things and you're allowed to be annoyed and you're allowed to be angry but when you're ready I think you should heal and you should forgive um and just understand that not everything is meant for you some things are meant for you for a small amount of time some things are meant for you for a long a long long time um but we're constantly changing and shedding as people so you can't expect to be the same person forever you can't expect to have the same experiences you can't expect to want to enjoy the same things as you did before because otherwise that would be kind of weird and boring I don't really know what this video is. I have no clue what I've said. I've definitely rambled. My voice hurts. I hate this video thing, but it's kind of thrilling at the same time. <laughs> yeah, the power of love and vulnerability. It's just having the courage to live and to go forward into life and embrace all experiences and don't be tainted and don't be haunted by the past. Um, have the courage and the vulnerability to go forward and say, okay, I'm gonna love again, I'm gonna laugh again, I'm gonna write again, um, I'm gonna play again, and just kind of allow life to flow as it wants to. Because it's, it's tricky being a person, it's tricky being a human, it's pretty exhausting and heartbreaking and crushing all at once but also it's thrilling and beautiful and we're not here forever. So don't wish your life away because we're all gonna die anyway. So just have the best time whilst you can, embrace all emotions, cry it out, sing it out, laugh it out, dance it out. This is kind of what the magazine means to me. It's very hard to explain. Um, but yeah, I hope when it comes out, you will read it. Um, there's so many like beautiful stories in there. Um, and images in there and people who have been brave enough to share their words. And I just think it's like the most beautiful. <clears throat> I honestly just think it's like the most beautiful thing in the world. So yeah. Yeah, I hope you like it and watch out for a launch party announcement in the next few weeks. Um, and if you don't see the magazine in December, you'll see it in January, but it is finished. It just depends on when the launch party is and then you can get your hands on it. It will be available on our website. Um, look out for more events afterwards, more videos with friends discussing the kind of themes of the magazine. And yeah, I just hope you enjoy this video. Who knows what it's going to be. I really don't. But I hope you <laughs> got something from it. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Um, goodbye. Live your life. And don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Like, don't be afraid. <laughs> oh dear. Don't be afraid to live. Like... Don't be afraid to make a fool of yourself. Do it anyway, because I think it's worse to live a life and not know like, with what ifs and like what could have been and like keeping your feelings and your hidden talents and stuff away out of fear of what other people think. You might as well just live as and feel sick after and afraid like I do making this video. <laughs> But then it's there and it's done and you've expressed that part of yourself and you can get on with your day and who the fuck cares about what anyone thinks. So, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to say today. Have a lovely week and I can't wait for you to see the magazine, yay. Goodbye, peoples.